What's up, Vintage Moto fans? Bill Wheeler here, Wheelhouse Garage. Welcome to episode six of A Bike and a Beer, the show where I talk about a vintage motorcycle while drinking an appropriately paired beer. Today, as you can see, we're talking about a very iconic bike for BMW. It's a 1974 BMW R90 S, making it a first year model for a bike you could only buy in 74, 75, and 76. I'm posing the question today, is this the best motorcycle that BMW ever made? If it is, it deserves the best beer out of Germany as well. And if you Google what the best beer in Germany is, you're likely to find this, which I'm pretty sure almost no one who doesn't speak German can pronounce. It's called a Weihenstefaner. It's a Haifei Weiss beer. It's a wheat beer from Germany's, well actually the world's oldest brewery. It's almost a thousand years old, but I read about this beer and it, uh, it's supposed to have a taste of banana, which scares me because it sounds gross. Let's see what we got. Here we go. I can taste the banana. Okay, a lot of banana. This is their best. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna drink it anyway. I'm gonna drink it. Why banana? All right, we're gonna dive into this bike, but before we do, we've got a winner to pick. Last week for the Harley episode, I announced we're giving away a six pack of 1985 edition Harley beer, and we're gonna do that today. All you had to do was subscribe to the channel and comment on any video. Um, so I compiled a list of all those names, put them in a jar, and we're gonna pick the winner right now. The winner, the 1985 Harley beer is <laughs> Weems Motor Co. Jared Weems. That's awesome. Thank you so much for your support, man. I'm going to be sending you a six pack of Harley beer and glad to do it. Thank you so much. So this bike is actually part of the Wheeler collection. It belongs to my father, good old Mucho Bill. And we bought it together at the 2019 Mecham auction. Um, it came from the MC collection of Stockholm, Sweden, which was a phenomenal collection. Um, I, of course, bought it with the intention of selling it, but my dad, who is a huge BMW fan, I think it took one test ride and he decided, man, this is a keeper. And he rides it really frequently, actually. So let's talk about why this bike exists. In the early 70s, BMW sales, they sucked in the, the US. And it's not that they didn't have great bikes because they did. They were formidable, they worked, but if we're honest, they were kind of boring. So BMW knew that they needed to make a change. And so they reached out, oddly enough, to a couple of car guys, Robert Lutz and Hans Muth, and they said, hey, you guys know what a motorcycle is, right? And they're like, yeah, of course, we like motorcycles. And they said, all right, well, make us a sexy one so we can actually sell it. And that's what they did. And they did a pretty damn good job. So, at the time they had the R75-5, which was BMW's fifth iteration of the boxer motor. They took that and they basically bored it out. They fed it with some Del Ordo carburetors, 38 millimeter, with an accelerator pump on them. And that gave the bike a lot more pep in its step compared to the other models. It was a much more lively motor. The styling on it is really what set it apart. This bikini fairing here and this paint job. This paint was was the only paint job available in 74. And it's a two-tone paint, as you can see. The pinstriping is very cool, um, but interesting fact, in 74, it was actually a sticker laid on under the clear coat. And people didn't really like that, so in subsequent years, they actually hand-painted them. In other years, you could also get the color Daytona Orange, which became like a really famous color. The employees of BMW jokingly referred to it as egg yolk. I love the dash on this bike, and to me, it's it's very inspired by a car. Um, it's got that voltmeter and that amazing clock. That clock still works on this bike, and it's just a really nice piece of luxury. Now, I had the absolute pleasure of riding this bike a lot today, and I can tell you, it's like the Rolls Royce of vintage motorcycles. If I had to break it down to one sentence, I would say like, you can ride this bike with complete confidence. 
it holds the road incredibly well, even with these tires that are somewhat marginal. Um, the geometry feels perfect. The suspension works great. The brakes, this bike has dual disc front brakes, which was the first time BMW ever did that. It was one of the first times it ever happened on a motorcycle. And they work really well. So does the rear drum, actually. The motor is strong. I don't know if I can call it fast, but it just won't get you in trouble. So um, you can carry high speeds. And the way that the bike runs and the way that it sounds, you feel like you could hold a high speed for a really long time. If you called me and you said, hey, Bill, we're going on a trip across country. Pick your bike. I would probably pick this because I wouldn't want any hassles on that on that trip. And this is a bike that I feel like you could ride a thousand miles in a day or 400 miles every day for seven days and literally be comfortable and never have a problem. That's what this bike communicates to me. And so I can easily recommend it if you're considering a vintage motorcycle and you want something that's reliable, dependable, and comfortable, and also stylish. And for that reason, I'm gonna say that this R90S is the best BMW motorcycle ever made. Now, that's my opinion, and of course I haven't ridden all the BMW motorcycles. It may change, and I'll let you know if it does. That's enough of my opinion. Let's ask someone who's really an expert. I rode up to my buddy Scotty's shop, who was literally just up the highway, and uh, he's really a BMW professional. So, let's take a look at his shop and see what he thinks. All right, so we are at Scotty's workshop here with Scotty. Greetings, everybody. Hey, and uh, this is the real expert on BMWs. So, um, Scotty, tell us a little bit about what you do here and uh, how you got started. We moved up here to Murphy's, California about a year and a half, almost two years ago. And so we're still in construction mode, getting moved in and getting the shop set up. And uh, it's been a long uh, and, and a long haul to get to this level, but we're really pleased with uh, the progress we've made and, and really comfortable up here in Murphy's. It's amazing. Nice. As you can see, we've got a great day. Oh man, totally. It's the best. Yeah. And how'd you get started? I was just into vintage BMWs uh, from a long time ago. Um, I've told the story many times, but basically I really liked vintage BMWs and I wanted to make my bike be as reliable and uh, you know, and perform as best as possible. So I started working on it. And through, I think it was through the internet, I found about uh, this group of guys that were getting together in Redwood City and um, they liked old BMWs also. And the chieftain of that group was an old cool guy named Joe Groger, who a lot of people probably know, because he was the patriarch of the vintage BMW community since probably the late 60s in the Bay Area. And so I started hanging out with Joe and this, and this other group of guys. And uh, whenever I had a question, I would just bring in something, some part of my bike, like the crankshaft or the engine or whatever. And I would say, how does this work? How can I fix this? And Joe would take the time to teach me. And I think he liked the fact that I was really into it. So he would just let me hang out at his shop and work on stuff. So cool. And uh, his shop was just, uh, it was unbelievable. It was like the machinist's uh, heaven on earth. He had any kind of machine you could possibly imagine all, all manual machines from the 60s and earlier all in his shop and I was just fascinated with all of it so I would I would ask him questions constantly how does this work how do I do this you know how, learn how to do something and he would be very eager to teach me so, so cool that's how I got into it what a great story awesome. uh, this is the main workshop where we have uh, four lifts and we usually have a bay back there where we work on at least one IZ at a time we're kind of like the IZ you know, central headquarters for repairs of that We do one at a time. Nice. Over here, we've got a, a conversion project that we're doing uh, for a fellow on the East Coast. Uh, Mike's about to do a disc brake conversion on that bike. Hey, Mike. How's it going? <laughs> <Hold on. laughs> I don't know how to say hello in German. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this bike over here is an R60 slash five that's in for a total mechanical restoration. Nice. So we're rebuilding the wheels, we're, we rebuilt the top end, it got all new engine seals, the transmission and the final drive were rebuilt, we um, went through the electrical system, um, it's basically going to get a full mechanical refresh. Nice, and you do all the machining and yeah, yeah we'll do it that. all. The reason for that was because, you know, it's we can't really find anybody else. To do. Yeah, definitely. Everybody's already retired or whatever. <laughs> Makes sense. Here's another a slash, well, actually a slash six that's in for a 
Cafe Racer project. Oh, cool. Yep. This is my K1 that I crashed a couple years ago. Oh, man. Yeah, I remember I'm gonna do that. A, I'm going to do an update on this, but I just got done with the color on that. So this is the new color for the bike. Ooh. What do you think? Nice. Pretty schnazzy. It was blue, right? It was blue. Yeah, yeah. right. So I decided I need I needed a more of a schnazzy color. And this guy right here I bought from um, uh, the original owner. Whoa. It's a beautiful uh, 91 GS with... Uh, 15,000 miles on it. We're just wow. doing a total mechanical refresh on it and then we'll put it up for sale. I wouldn't mind keeping it for myself, but right. you know, every bike's like I that. I know, right? Yeah. I got the same thing going. Then in this room over here is the machine shop. Um, wow. We do a lot of work on repairing components in here. Yeah. Cylinder heads and we make little parts. We do a lot of repair work for other BMW shops, mostly cylinder heads and crankshafts, transmission repair, things like that. I've got a a hardening five seat chucker over there, a, um, a rolling saw, um, a big closing drill press. Those are my precision grinders over in the corner. Nice. True machine shop. Yep. I do a, a fair amount of like crankshaft grinding. We repair these bits here for uh, oh. old, B old BMWs where we build up the shafts. Nice. So um, we weld those up and then I have an OD grinder set up on the uh, precision machine and a couple of bridge ports for doing uh, cylinder heads and whatnot. Got to have them. The, uh, the Harrison lathe over there is made in England. Wow. And what makes it kind of cool, I think, is that it can cut English and uh, metric threads without changing any gears. Wow. There's a few lay there's few lathes that can do that, and this is one of them, and that's why I bought it. That's amazing. Yeah, so... It, um, it's very handy. So I, I do things like make a cylinder exhaust thread repairs on this lathe and very it does a cool. good job of that. And this is my boring bar, my hub lathe, and a couple of other smaller uh, grinding machines over here for doing valves. And back here, David's hard at work over here. Hey, David. So David does most of our gearboxes. Oh, cool. And rear ends. Nice. And then this is Paul over here. Hey, Paul. Everybody knows go. Paul. How are you? Okay, how about you? Good to see you. Good. Paul's building engines and crankshafts and other things that turn. Very good. <laughs> nice. Well, there they are. R90 S's. We got both colors here. They only came in two colors, right? That's right, yeah. Black. This bike was originally, uh, had, had um, orange flames on it when I bought it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> It'll be put up for sale. I've been slowly tinkering with it. The guy's, the guy's been working on it for like the past maybe two years. Gotcha. I've had three other Daytona Orange R90S's before this one. And we did the paint on this one. This one received a mechanical refresh. And it's an unusual bike because it's kind of a mixture of parts. Yeah. 75, 74 and weird stuff all okay. mixed together. Um, it has all the San Jose racing stuff on it, which kind of makes it neat. Man. And so, you've had a lot of experience with R90S's. Do you think the BMW R90S is BMW's best motorcycle? Well, <laughs> it's, certainly, <No> pressure. <laughs> it's certainly one of their epic motorcycles. Yeah, you know, a BMW, highlight. They, yeah, they, they have like, BMW, every once in a while, they'll come out with some model that's epic or kind of like ostentatious in some way yeah and i really like that about bmw yeah. they do yeah. that with the cars too yeah like you know you've got you know like the csl right and then uh the m5 yeah and so on and so forth the m3 and so on and they usually have crazy color schemes right well you know you can't much get much crazier than this that's right so but cool do you think there is a, is there a best one, bike that sticks out in your mind do you think there's just highlights i am you know, I, I keep coming back to my early GS. If there was one bike that oh, I could nice. keep. And if I was just a rider and I didn't go to like bike shows and stuff yeah. like that, I have an old beat up GS that is yeah. my favorite bike. Nice. I just, I love riding it. I'd ride it on the street. I ride it on the dirt. Yeah. If I had to go a trip, I'd probably take that bike. Nice. Well, thank you so much for spending the time today. It's always good to see Thanks you. Thanks for coming by, Bill. We're going to head back. Hey, no problem. Anytime. I'm going to head back and finish the episode. And Thanks, guys. All right, my friends, that's going to wrap up this episode of A Bike and a Beer. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the bike. We're going to be back next week with a totally new bike, a totally new beer to do it all again. But until then, bottoms up.